It's the NFL on EA Sports. And there's no love lost between these AFC South foes. It's the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. All that and more coming up next. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today, it's a good matchup in the AFC South between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now. Because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted. They expect you to play earlier, and these guys as competitors, they'll take their bumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. Here's the former Utah Ute, Matt Gay, to get this one started. And off we go on EA Sports. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start the 25 drive. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. They're mobile QB. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. The throw over the middle, taken in. That what a first down pickup of eight. They'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Gets the dump off to Pierce. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. First and ten, it's Pierce. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. 
And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. So the Colts in great position here as they get things started. And they are let out their mobile quarterback. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. And now before the ball changes hands, they're gonna take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts. And he'll be left with a third and about four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Throwing now is Stroud. Work of the sideline here. Did he get the feet in? Yes, they say that he did. Nice job tapping both of them down. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First and 10, it's Stroud. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And he remains perfect on this opening drive. Charles now 5 of 5 and another first down to work with. He's like one of those great shooters in basketball that has his rhythm, has his confidence. He doesn't think anything is going to miss right now. As far as he's concerned, he's going to be perfect the entire game. And who's to say that it won't happen the way he's throwing it right now? So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. And the last run got three, now here's second and seven. The second down throw now from Stroud. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Texans are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And oftentimes we think about statement drives in the second halves of games, especially in the fourth quarter. But here, it's happening early. A definite statement. They've held on to the ball for a healthy portion this first quarter already. And now after that completion, they're set up first and goal. First and goal. A chance for an early statement here on the road. Pierce Pierce he is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Now here's Stroud. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Third and goal, Stroud. And that is caught. 
Touchdown, Texans! Dalton Schultz from four yards out. And the Texans are on the board first here this afternoon. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback charger on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with as you described a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was the tight end Dalton Schultz on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. On first down, Richardson. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Richardson looking to throw. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor. They'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Texans here on third down putting an extra defender in the secondary. On third down, here's Richardson. Going for the deep ball. He's got a man complete. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. A big play there for Indy. 57 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Richardson looking to throw this. Touchdown, Colts! Isaiah McKenzie, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are able to match the opening drive touchdown against him with one of their own. 
Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point by Gain is up and good, and we are tied at seven. A drive that time of six plays, and the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Fields it right around the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On second down, it's Stroud. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. Uh, give left side for Pierce. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Now give them credit for trying, but there's no fool in the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stop the run, and then execute it. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Stroud on third down now. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. Absolutely have to credit the pass protection there on third down because he had all sorts of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through his progressions. And you just have to know that sooner or later, someone's going to work his way open if you don't get to him. Make sure those guys up front get plenty of credit and recognition for a job well done. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Stroud now on first and 10. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Samson Abuka, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. 
And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Stroud. Over the middle, complete. It's Schultz. And he'll be brought down at the 27. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. And Stroud now to throw. That's complete to Pierce. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This from 42 yards out. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? Well, well, I wouldn't change it. it up until they showed me a reason to do so. His second catch, this one not quite as dynamic as his first, and it's second down. Let's do this, man. Yeah, Richardson back to throw it. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes it, the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession, as they've got it with a first and ten. They give to Taylor out of the gun, and he'll take this one up close to about the forty-five. And now a stoppage, and it looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment.
Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Richardson. Throw left side complete. That's McKenzie. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 42-yard line. First and 10, it's Richardson. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and 10. Now Richardson. And that's incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And that is no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. And this is a commentary in today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on him, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. And now out comes Houston. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Stroud sets up the play action. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Now here's Stroud on third down. That's caught again by Schultz. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. 
Stroud now on second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. This offense so far on third down, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and nine. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Kaimi Fairbairn now to attempt the Texan field goal. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then tonight and see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Here's a second and two now from the 33. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. On third down, it's Richardson. He's got the tight end, Mo Ali cox And he is going to have a Colts first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Richardson now on second down. The throw up, and now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield, and the Texans scoop it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it and not realizing that danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, give him 14. 
And if his coaches are correct, we're going to see a lot more runs like that from this young rookie going forward. And you know slapping each other on the back up in the boots right now? The scouting department, because they really recommended this guy highly, and he's justifying their faith in him. Play action. Stroud now. He finds his man complete. It's Schultz. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Thirty-eight yard line, second and nine. Now Stroud. And this is going to be incomplete. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Here's Stroud. Flush to his right. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. Fourth down, Stroud going to try to throw for it. And he's got the hook up here, it's Woods. And he is going to have the Texans first down as they wind up with a game of 11 there on fourth down. 11 yards on the pickup, and the Texans are going to have a first. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. Touchdown, Texans! Dalton Schultz, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And they are able to add on to their advantage. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And the lead is now 13. That time, a six-play drive. And it was the tight end, Dalton Schultz, on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. 
Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles, but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch, partner, for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. I haven't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first-round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Richardson off the play fake. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down, so he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. First and ten, here's Richardson with it. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Well, you don't expect too many quarterbacks to be adept at breaking away from would-be tacklers, but this is uncommonly good right here as he's able to get away. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed out of my way and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Here's Richardson to throw. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Richards into the air on first down. His throw incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Every day, let's do what we do every day. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Second down, here's Richardson. Throw left side, take it in by Pittman. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 29-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. On first down, Richardson. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it. And it'll be second down. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads. And he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. And he's got his, oh, he's hit, he lost the football, put it on the carpet, and the Texans scoop it. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. 
Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Following the fumble recovery, Stroud. Wide open receiver complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, 21 yards. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. On first down, here's Stroud. And his throw's going to be incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. The second down throw now from Stroud. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Open man there is Collins complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 42. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. So they go from one 42-yard line to the other as they come up now first and 10. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Stroud to the air on first and ten. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Stroud here on third and long. And that is incomplete. Right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. I like what they tried to do there. Tried to hit him with something quick, get the ball in his hands, and hope he could make some yards after the catch and pick up a first down. Weren't able to do so on that play. Now Kaimi Fairbairn out for the field goal try for the Texans. And this one a 41-yard attempt. 
The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So able to add on to their first half lead here, Charles, forcing the miscue with a fumble and then turning that into three points. Yeah, and more than happy to accept any mistakes the other side is willing to make. No problem. You turn it over, we'll take that, and we'll use it to expand our lead. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Taken in at the three. And able to get this out to the 25. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now Richardson. Now that's into the hands of Mo Ali Cox, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. A final shot before the half. Richardson. He's going to float this over the middle deep. And that is incomplete. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans, out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Houston. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they too were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And the half will begin with a touchback. The Colts ready to go to work to start the third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you'd think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, They've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And just a yard to go here on second down. Richardson looking to throw this. He'll drop this down to Taylor, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. This pass caught, it's Woods. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 34. To the right side, this is Taylor. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Richardson now on second down. Over the middle complete, it's McKenzie. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Again, it's Richardson. Able to find his man, Woods. And the Colts are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Taylor is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. It finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it and catch it, and he gets it done. Frank Reich going to tell the offense to go for two. They'll let Taylor try and run. And he will find the end zone again. So he gets the touchdown and the two-point conversion. And that will cut this deficit down a little bit further. And now this makes it a brand new ball game. Now it's a one-score affair after they get the two. And you have to know they were holding their breath on the two-point play because they had to have it to get it within the range that you just talked about. Dialed up their two-point play. It worked. Now they're feeling like they've got a shot at this one.
After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And this fielded right at the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. They'll start on the ground with Pierce to about the 33-yard line. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Stroud working out of the gun. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. from Colts territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 43. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Throwing now is Stroud. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. Just a gain of a couple there. And it brings up third and five now. What's the deal, y'all? Playmaker, step up, right? Here's Stroud. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he is going to have a Texans first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy could be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Crowd now on first and ten. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Here's second and ten now from about the 32. The throwing again is Stroud. He's got it to Collins complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping him on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. The 
They'll run here with Pierce. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. On second down, it's Stroud. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Dalton Schultz from four yards out. And the Texans go up by two touchdowns. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around, they're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 15 yards there on the play as they try to chip away at this 15-point deficit. It's so important to tackle well against these guys, but you and I both know that's easier said than done. When the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy and it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down and it did right there from all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive first and 10 Taylor now and he's going to be stopped up quickly here just a yard up to the 39 well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Now it's second and nine. Again, it's Taylor. And he's going to bull his way forward to the 48. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. Running straight ahead, Taylor. Corey Littleton there on the tackle. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync. And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Second down, here's Richardson. Quick slant here to Woods. 
And he goes down at the 26. A pickup of 13, and that last play began at the 13. First down. First and ten, it's Richardson. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. A throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. Throw left side, take it in by Pittman. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Here Richardson yet again. He's got the tight end, Mo Ali Cox. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. Gay's kick is good, and they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. After the made field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. Fields it right around the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now? Those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again. They'll be looking for something here. Anything to seize that momentum back. Final minute now of the third quarter. The second down throw now from Stroud. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Stroud on third down now. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. The lessons will continue of this rookie. He's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That far behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. Let's 
Here's Cameron Johnston now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. To return is McKenzie. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Play action. Now Richardson. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hoping they can come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And they will get this across midfield, but still well short of the first as he's dropped at the 46. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down to force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. What's the deal, guys? Let's go do this thing, man. Fourth down, desperation time. Here's Richardson, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down, and this Texans defense stands tall. So they really needed points here in a two-score game, could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll be dropped at the 36. It's a good gain of 18 on a play that originated back at the 18. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Pierce now up the middle. 40 yards rushing for him now to this point. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On second down, here's Pierce. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. 
Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Third and one, Stroud. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. The fullback dive held up short. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. And I am not sure, partner, there what the mindset was to go for. I don't know. And some teams just feel that possession is the key to everything. They just want to have the football in their hands. No matter how it goes to the other team, they just don't trust doing that. So they say, let's uh, go for it and try and finish it ourselves. Richardson to the air on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, it's Richardson on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's McKenzie. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Richardson from near his goal line. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, here's Richardson. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Shifts by him. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And the Texans will take over. Houston set to take over. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. First and 10, it's Pierce. He'll get this down to the 38. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Stroud now on second down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. 
Nico Collins, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. And Stroud now to throw. Open man there is Collins complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 26. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. They'll run on first down with Singletary. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Uh, give to Pierce. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two yard gain. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. This one left side caught by Collins. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 15-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. Throw right side, taken in by Collins. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds, right around the seven. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Stroud now on third and two. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Schultz. And the Texans are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. I'd love to sit down at some point in our offseason and talk to these defensive coordinators in the red zone. Tight end is obviously a big threat. Yet these guys continue to make plays. Is there any other way to stop them? Apparently not. In the red zone, like you said, that's your guy that got it to him. Supreme confidence in going to a playmaker. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll try to run it in, going option right. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. He kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself, but the defensive front wouldn't allow him to do so, bringing up second down and a bit farther. From back at the four, here's second and goal. 
Back to throw. Here's Stroud. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown-saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Here's Pierce. We'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Hey, we do do what we do. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And that one makes this a 19-point game. So that one a 13-play drive in total. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Colts set to take over here offensively. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Richardson now on second down. He'll find his man. That's Taylor again. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. Now it's Richardson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Second down, here's Richardson. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. I guess at this point, Charles, heck, why not take some shots? I would agree with that totally because a big play can't hurt at all. Heck, you might get a pass interference call out of it. Somehow the ball might get tipped up and you come down with it. Might not do too much for the result of the game, but it could add to your stats. Now they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Richardson looking to throw. 
the throw there going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Going for it on fourth, here's Richardson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield, right at the 48. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And now out comes Houston. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, it doesn't look like it's going to matter much. They'll start on the ground here on first down, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted.